So in this class, we, we've managed, or we're going to manage to work with three social networks. And there's lots of them out there. Uh, and how do you keep track of it all, and how do you pay attention to it all? So let me give you this link to this website. So if you want to check it out too, you can open up your web browser. We'll go to this website here. Mashable.com. Now, remind me, did I talk about that in this class? Uh, briefly. Briefly, okay. So here we can talk about it. Mashable.com. This is a great website that I visit very often. It's a blog in that there's new content every day, lots of new things every day. And um, it's about uh, technology and social media tech news, all of that stuff. So here is where you can go to read about what are the, the latest, um, what's the latest in social media, in apps, etc. So I would say check out this website. This is where, where I heard about things like um, there's a, every few months, it seems, at least once a year, there's always um, a, a controversy in Facebook. Uh, the last big controversy was the one about the, um, the secret social experiment that was done upon everyone that used Facebook. Did anyone not hear about that? If you didn't hear about that, Facebook, either last year or two years ago or so, they conducted an experiment on everyone using Facebook, or a lot of people, hundreds of millions of people, uh, that they would put on your home timeline. You know how there's always ads and such um, in between your, your friends and family stuff. Facebook, on a certain segment, put more negative type of content on your home screen and on other group more positive content and that was a psychological experiment that they wanted to see what was the result of that how did people then behave on Facebook and they found that people that had more negative news up on their timeline also posted negative content so on the one hand it's okay that's interesting scientific experiment but on the other hand I don't remember signing up to do that and a lot of people are saying, neither did I. So that happened <clears throat> without anyone's overt consent, uh, which Facebook would say, oh, well, we can't get the most accurate results if we tell people we're going to experiment them on them, right? Circular logic. And so um, I'm coming to that because every so often when some sort of controversy like that with Facebook happens, there's a reaction to it. And one of the reactions is that a brand new social network just was launched less than two months ago in response to that. So here's another social network you can, uh, you can find out about, and uh, it's brand new. If you haven't heard about it, it's called Ello, Ello.co. Ello.co, Ello, is supposed to be, is supposed to be about a... Um, a, in contrast to Facebook in that it um, won't sell your data, it won't um, do things without your consent, it's supposed to not have any advertising. Have you noticed in Facebook there's a lot of advertising on the side and some on the top and all over the place. Twitter, when we were using Twitter we saw that we saw advertising once in a while, you know, in the main timeline, there's something that said promoted. Google Plus, in contrast, though, doesn't have any advertising. But all of these social networks, you know, the ugly side of all of these social networks is that basically we're using this service. And as cynical as it sounds, a lot of times these social networks are not uh, there for us, the users. They're there for the advertisers. How do these companies make money? They sell advertising. You know, there's a billion people on Facebook. 
that's a lot of eyeballs for advertisers, and we clearly see it that there's ads on the sides on, all over the place. Uh, Ello came out that they wanted to to be the antithesis of that, that no ads, it's all about your friends and your family, and we're not going to take your uh, personal data and sell it. And so, on the one hand, yeah, you can connect with your friends and family on Facebook and Twitter and all of that, but on the other hand, you know, you're going to see advertising and you're going to possibly, when you click the agree button, you're agreeing to more than you thought. That was one of Facebook's defenses that it was like, when you, when you clicked agree to sign up for Facebook, that gave us the leeway to do this experiment on you. Now, how many of you clicked on the agree button in the last six months? You probably did it years ago when you signed up for Facebook, before they even had that idea. So honestly, full disclosure, I have to say that, that Facebook isn't my favorite social network. I, I got onto it only because to do work for, actually that, that's coming back over here. I got onto it to, um, I got onto it to do uh, social media work for clients. And I've connected with my friends and family and such, but I'm not really onto it to have fun. I do it for, for business. Uh, Google Plus is the one that I like for friends and family. But still, I know that you know, I'm putting my information on, on Google, the largest search engine, a huge company. And who knows deep down what really they're going to do with it all. So you have to be comfortable that if you're going to get on a social network, if you're going to do it for personal purposes, Perhaps it's not exactly what you signed up for. For business purposes, that's something else, because hopefully you're putting out content that benefits your business and not a detriment. Second favorite is, is Twitter for me. So Ello is a brand new network that just launched right now. It's on uh, invitation only, so it doesn't have the hundreds of millions of users yet. It's still kind of cozy, and it could be people <coughs> and brands and such, and you have to request an invitation. So how many have, have you have heard of Ello before I mentioned it today? One or two people. So it's very new. One of the reasons I bring it up to you also is maybe get in on this and claim your name. How many of you had trouble claiming your perfect name on Twitter? Well, Twitter's been around years. Victor's Bakery might have been taken by someone else. Here, probably Victor's Bakery is not taken. So whatever your company name is, perhaps at least just claim it. Get in here and then get the request and, and get your name so you can have lo.co with your company name. Um, you know, then then you'll have your 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 name and no one else can get it. But that's an alternative social network that just came out, and their big thing is that they're they're gonna be more for you rather than advertisers. They just got like $5.5 .5 million in investment from companies that they, um, you know, whenever you get whenever you get sold to investors or, or shareholders and such, oftentimes they have some sort of control <coughs> over the company, right? Well, these guys are supposed to be that they've only let themselves get invested by those that follow their same standards. No um, selling of private data, no advertising and such. So lo.co, I recommend you check that out, and also Mashable. As I said, I found out about, I found out a, a lot of things about social media and such um, here. For example, we're not going to get to it, but another social network is Vine. Has anyone heard of Vine before? Raise your hand. If you haven't heard of Vine, if you haven't heard of Vine, it's a uh, video sharing site. And the thing about it is that the videos are six seconds long, maximum. Well, what can you do in six seconds, you think? You know, I, I can't really do anything. Well, there's a lot of creative people out there that in six seconds can tell a story from beginning to end, or a quick little video about your product, or, you know, smiling people with your brand and such. Uh, Vine at the moment is app only, so you have to use it on a mobile device, which has a camera, which records the video. So here's a here's a, a blog post: seven Vine tips and tricks to upgrade your videos. So it's easier to point 
your camera at something and record six seconds and upload and then get no replies and no likes and no follows. But if you read here, uh, you'll get the tips about um, what can you do to really get the best out of it. Like, think about a Vine video to kind of show off your product quickly, entice people, like different angles of the product, music playing in the background and such. Mashable.com, I recommend you check it out. Any questions on either of these at the moment? Mashable or Ello? All right, so the network we're going to check out today is Pinterest. Let's go to Pinterest.com. Yes? So I noticed on those things that the shop that you it's because it's getting harder and harder to find the dot com. Okay. Same like if victorsbakery.com is taken, I might be able to still buy victorsbakery.co. Okay, so that, that's like, just you know, can't use the whole thing. Exactly. Um, there's some, oh, you can also get dot biz, you know, if you're a company. So let's go over to Pinterest.com slash Mashable. Let's go look at the Pinterest account for Mashable.com. So notice many of these have the same sort of uh, scheme for your, for your vanity address on these networks. Uh, Twitter.com slash Victor's Bakery. Uh, Pinterest.com slash Victor's Bakery. Um, Facebook.com slash Victor's Bakery. So uh, let's look at Pinterest.com slash Mashable. They've got their own website, and then, of course, a, mash, a presence on, on, on Pinterest and Twitter and everywhere. And the, on that other class that I teach, the 19-week the class, I had a, a, I had a class meeting where we, we have the time where we can afford to spend one class meeting on, for example, last week I said, everyone just... Uh, take a piece of paper and, and ask a couple of questions and drop it in this bucket and I'll spend the day answering questions, everything related about social media and websites and such. Can't quite do that here, but that's why I recommend take that other class where we have a lot more time to do things. And people asked in there, uh, what, there was a question very relevant that was, nowadays with a, face, with a presence on Facebook or any social media, is it still relevant to have my own website? Do I still need a .com or .net or whatever? The answer, the short answer to that is, it depends on what you're trying to do online. If you're selling a product, you're not exactly going to be able to sell your product on Twitter or Facebook or Mashable. Now, Mashable and Twitter are starting to add some sort of e-commerce features, but it's still a way out, especially for the little guys like us. You'll be able to buy something on Amazon with a tweet, but for the little guys, maybe not yet. So then you would need your own website to sell your products. You use Twitter, you use Facebook to direct people, to build a buzz, to bring them back to your website, and that's where you sell. Now, if you're, if you're like a band, and you make your money at concerts and selling merchandise at the concert, maybe you don't need a website. Maybe you just need Facebook that you're updating every day. Maybe you don't need to invest in the domain name of your website. You can just do it in, in Facebook, on Mashable. So it depends on your on your needs, but I think that was a good question. Most of the time, though, I would lean toward, yes, you still need your own website because you can fully control the message there. Your content is there, you control it completely. What I mean by that is on Twitter. There's lots of examples of Twitter fails in that a company tweets something, they make up a hashtag, and then for some reason the hashtag is co-opted into something negative. There was, uh, several months ago, the New York Police Department wanted to do community outreach. They were going to tweet, and they were going to, and they tweeted something that was like, uh, tell us about your great New York Police Department stories, hashtag myNYPD, something like that. And what happened was a lot of people started to co-opt that hashtag to show police brutality, police <laughs> hubris, uh, and all of that. And so the message got completely away from them on Twitter. On your own website, you have the ability to click delete on a negative comment, and it's gone. 
And it's not censorship. It's not um, trampling on your Second Amendment, I mean, your First Amendment rights, because technically the amendments are for government intrusion upon our rights, not individual companies. So you have the ability on your own website to, for them to, to remove the messages of your mean, of the mean people, and it's up to you. It's your website. On something like Twitter, you can't go in and delete people's tweets. It's impossible. On Facebook, you have some leeway. You can post something, and if people start to put bad things, you go in there and delete their message on your post. Mashable, I'm sorry, Pinterest, is the social network that is great for photos. Notice when we lo load up Mashable's Pinterest account, where, where we see this big screen full of pictures. These are known as pin boards. What we're looking at are sort of organizational units, folders of content. They've made a folder called infographics, a folder called social media. TV, movies, and music. And in those, they pin content. They, they add pins. So the terminology here is about like a bulletin board, that one up on the board over there. That's like Pinterest 1.0 over there. The stuff there, people go to look at it, and if someone likes it, you know, they can give it a like. Or you can organize that. Everything on the left side is going to be about new classes. Everything on the right side is going to be about how to register. So it's organized. Here's the same sort of thing. You organize all the content into pin boards. And what you add to the pin board are pins. You can like a pin. You can comment on a pin. You can repin a pin. So this one, for example, TV, movies, and music. It has 456 pins. Nerds Like to Eat 2 has 198 pins. Career Advice, 45 pins. So here they organize all of the content that they find across the web into 50 boards, 50 folders, and it's 7,255 pins. And then the stat over here, they are following 177 other Pinterest users, and they in turn have 1.4 million followers. So a lot of people paying attention. Same thing like Twitter and everything else. I post something new, my followers will see it. That's the point of having followers, not just as an ego boost. That high number, that's your captive audience. So here, 1.4 million people on Pinterest, <coughs> when Mashable pins something, they see it. Imagine what you could be pinning. Enticing pictures of your products, um, more action-oriented pictures of your company, like let's say you sell real estate or you do real estate, but perhaps it's more enticing to see happy families walking into their brand new house instead of the property itself. If you're a nonprofit organization, you want to show the people that are positively affected by your organization. So it's a very visual medium. You can do pictures, and it can do video, but I don't see video as very hot on Pinterest. It's mostly about pictures. So for business, if you're not really a visual thing, and say you're selling a tangible product, you're just trying to reach a specific audience, would you use this as a viewer on this? Would you use it as a way of like putting funny things on there to attract them to you, or would you just say, it's really not so good? It does depend. It does depend on your particular company, like mine, PMD Interactive. Well, we do websites and social media, and uh, marketing and stuff. That's intangible, okay. to a sense. Okay, and, I, do, I do printer repair and solar sale. Cool. San Diego County. You could definitely be still showing, for example, the range of printers that you are able to service. You know, are you still able to service that classic dot matrix printer? Maybe put pictures of that. And again, whatever is intangible, you could be showing the results of, of what people are, are doing with your product or the positive aspect that your product, like right here, digital fitness and health. You know, it's showing the result of this person that is, that is fit rather than the product. Buy this protein powder. It's like, look at the results of the protein powder. 
So perhaps show more of your results. And again, everyone has to decide what, okay, like inspiration, obviously very intangible, but here's a quote and the person that said it. So you have to decide what, um, for all of these networks, what... Just trying to drive who you receive, right? Yeah, getting attention, getting a captive audience. So this, uh, this account has a lot of followers. Let's look at uh, some that are a little bit more down to earth, but also how examples of using Pinterest. Uh, let's look at this person here. Uh, he's uh, he was a former student. Now he's a colleague. Uh, his um, his Pinterest profile is Pinterest.com slash Mosher thirteen. He he says a website designer and developer, husband, etc. Passing along inspiration. So he does websites. He does programming on, on websites, 53 boards, 5,000 pins, 158 likes. That is what he has liked on Pinterest. And then his stats are that he's following 153 accounts and that he's got 36,000 followers. So the little people can also get a big audience. So whenever he posts something, those people follow, those people see it. His divisions, infographics. How many of you have heard of that term before? Infographics. If you haven't, let's check out what they are. These are very cool things. Um, if you go to his profile, like I said, pinterest.com slash Mosher13, and then go to infographics. Here it'll show you all of the infographics in that board. And basically an infographic is an interesting way to present some data. Whereas, let's see corporations and their senior executives. This could have been a very boring uh, PowerPoint or a spreadsheet or something that shows like this. One, one third of those say it's good when corporations are strong and influential because they are the engines of innovation and economic growth. So obviously that could have been a, a simple bar in a bar chart. And here it's represented by one third of people, and then this stat right here in a little circle graph. Again, three fifths is represented here as you know three fifths of a group of people. Americans and the Chinese are the opposite sides of the world. The American public is divided on whether corporations are a source of hope or fear. Eighty-four percent of Chinese respondents say corporations are a source of hope. So, again, dry data, but then representing it in a little more graphical way. So that's what an infographic is, information presented in a graphical way. So Chuck's uh, pin board here has how many? Um, 1,378 uh, 1, other infographics that he's culled from around the web and, and put them out there, and so this I recommend his account also follow it, check out his, his infographics here. You, you can glean a lot of great information from, from infographics. Okay, so graphics. The, um, that's the main uh, thrust of Pinterest, graphics. But uh, when we create an, one in a moment, we'll also see the great thing about Pinterest is that you can easily add attribution to your content. For example, if I go to Great Web Designs, at the very top here is Chuck's pin from his own company, CTD Web Designs. Every pin, by default, oftentimes has a link back to the source. So if you pin something from your own website, it will come with the link back to your website. So here you're showing Victor's Bakery. I'm showing these latest cupcakes that I've made. I pin it to Pinterest. My 100 people see it. And right at the bottom, it's got a link back to my website to buy it. So while you don't sell things directly on Pinterest yet, there's always this attribution that takes you back to the originating uh, source. Now, you post that cupcake to your 100 followers. Let's say one of those followers has a thousand followers. 
and that person then, she repins that pin to her pin board, and now her 1,000 followers can see it, and that has a link back to your website. It follows, the attribution follows it wherever it goes through Pinterest. So now you're getting more of a captive audience, the followers of your followers. Notice these all say, where, do, where are these coming from? Pinned from webdesign.org, pinned from behance.net, pinned from wpmustache.com. So once your content gets on, on Pinterest, it can spread out all over the place and then take you back to your original link. So we'll see more of these nuances as we get into it. Let's, let's actually set up here. I'm going to go back to Pinterest.com, the main link. And here's the thing about Pinterest. It's like, uh, it's, it's like Google Plus and Facebook in that there's a personal account and a business account. Unlike Twitter, where it's either or. If you make a Twitter account, it could be for personal or business. Google Plus, we needed to create a personal account before we can create business accounts. Facebook, same sort of thing. You need a personal account and then you can create business accounts. Here, sort of like that, but you don't need a personal one to create the business one, but you need to go directly to create the business one first. So you don't need a personal one. We're going to see here on the home page. Somewhere it seemed to have disappeared. Oh, there it is. Uh, at the bottom here, you should see businesses. Click on businesses. If you don't see it, you can also simply go to the address business.pinterest.com. That's a direct link as well. Internally, these are different, business and personal. Externally, for the users, they don't look really that much different. Internally, we're going to be able to look at statistics and analytics. We're going to be able to see what time do people come to my uh, Pinterest account, what's the most popular pin this week, where did people come from, where do people go. Analytics, statistics, we want that as informed business owners because we want to know what works and what doesn't. You don't get that on a personal account. So if you created Pinterest and the business accounts are relatively new. I don't remember exactly when they've implemented them, but they feel like less than a year old. Pinterest has been around probably three years or so, some, something like that, three or four years. Um, and so if you created, a, you created an account a while ago as your business, technically you probably have your personal account. Somewhere here we'll see where do you upgrade your account into a business account as it should be. But if you're creating one brand new today, this is the way we're going to do it. We'll go to business.pinterest.com and we'll see about creating an account. Yes? So do you suggest to have a personal account to start out and then have a business account separately? No, you don't, need a, you don't need a personal one at all. You can do a personal one if you want to. Okay. But you, but you want to create the business one right now. We'll create one right now. Yes? Okay, so what you said is basically I could upgrade my personal one Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, yeah, somewhere here we'll find an option to do that. Or maybe, oh, here we go. This might be it. We'll look at it in detail. There's right here, convert now. You might have already had the personal one to upgrade to the business. So right here, get discovered by millions of people looking for things to plan, buy, and do. Notice what it's saying, plan, buy, and do. Think about those three things. Write those down, plan, buy, and do. Because what do you want to do on any of these social networks? In the beginning, people think, well, I'll just advertise myself. But people get numb to advertising quickly. But if you think about more action terms, plan, buy, and do, you might already kind of have an idea of what to post regarding buy. Here's my cupcake. Buy it. But think about what, you, what content you can share for people to think about planning something or doing something. Okay, I've got these cupcakes, a birthday's coming up. You know, sale this Saturday on birthday cupcakes. Or, um, you know, have some sort of picture that says, you know, don't be frazzled this uh, Christmas time, let us do the baking. And pictures of the, of, the, of the pumpkin pie. 
um, plan, buy, and do. So think about more of an active stance in social media, not passive. You know, don't just put out content. Think about how it can be active content. So you can go on and read here. Featured success stories, the blog. I recommend um, at your leisure read their blog because that's like the manual to how to use Pinterest. Straight from the horse's mouth, they're telling you what has worked, what could work, advice, uh, the latest information on features. When they implement more of an e-commerce capability, they'll be announcing it on their blog. You want to get in there, start reading it, and get on board faster than your competitors. Three online businesses using Pinterest to increase sales. So again, we're able to spend a day on this, but this is almost like lifelong learning, all of this stuff. There's always something new to learn. You can get it straight from their blog. Twitter has a blog. Google Plus has a blog. We didn't get into it, but you know, we search Twitter blog, and you'll get to Twitter's blog, and you'll find out what they're doing. And notice that even these guys and gals, Pinterest, which I would say is like one of the four most important networks to get on, even they are on the other networks. They've also got a presence on Facebook and Google+, and Twitter, and YouTube, and Flickr. So uh, isn't that a bit ironic? A social network on a social network. And it just goes to show that, yes, it behooves you to be on all the platforms. Obviously, it takes more time and effort. And if I have to distill it down to a couple, I would really say Facebook, because there's just more people on it. Google+, Plus because it's so linked to Google Search. Twitter, because it's also very uh, community-driven. And then Pinterest, because of the demographic of it being a very visual medium, it seems to skew more toward uh, a female audience. So if your brand, your product is anything uh, that women might be interested in, Pinterest is a good place to go to. Actually, this might be good here. I'll just write right here. Pinterest, this, is, this one is good for a female audience. Facebook is sort of like everyone. Google Plus is tech savvy. Twitter is younger. YouTube is younger. Flickr is useful, but it's not what it used to be. It's not the big... So, uh, it's not the big photo sharing site anymore. Pinterest, I think, it has uh, surpassed it. And GitHub, that's really only for nerds. How many of you have heard of GitHub before? No nerds in here? Okay. All right, so at the top here, let's click Join as a Business. It'll ask for an email, password, business name, business type, and website optional. But if you have a website, I would recommend you add it. So go ahead and fill out an email. This can be your personal email, your business email, doesn't matter. Just an email where you can go to confirm your identity so you get the full features of Pinterest, such as being able to comment on people's pins. The purpose of commenting is that it helps you build a presence online, that you're not just doing a monologue, you're doing a dialogue. So social media, I believe, can be a monologue and a, or a dialogue. Both are viable, but I would recommend to have more of a dialogue. What happens in a dialogue? Two people talking back and forth. Social media, you're talking, you're putting stuff out to the social network, you're also taking stuff from the social network. You're replying to people. You're interacting with people. The dialogue. Monologue is just that you're putting stuff on the social network and you never reply to people. You never follow up. You never create that back and forth. Commenting is a way to do that. And to comment, you have to verify your email.
this name here that it's asking you for, this can have the spaces and the capitalization and all of that. It's on the next screen where we can choose the, the username, the one that's Pinterest.com Victor's Bakery. That's the one that might be taken. That's the one that's unique. This one, I believe, can be anything. I think you can even do exclamation points and other symbols. Business type. Try to select something that applies to you. I'm going to go with Victor's Bakery, which would be local business. Website. And then select create account. And now many of the social networks nowadays through their evolution they've seen or they seem to believe that in order for you to get the most out of these networks, you know, emphasize the social, in social network, the connections. So even though we're doing a business account here, we should still have connections to other users on the network because they could be potential customers, eyeballs, and audience. So in that sense, in that vein here, we're getting something that we saw like in Twitter and Google Plus about why don't you follow some of these interests that you are interested in. You can of course unfollow later, but I'm going to say, well, I'll select the food recipes because I'm a restaurant, and it's going to want you to select a few of them, and then you can uh, go on. See, there's general themes and then specific ones. So you want to select a few, and uh, I think it's five of them, and then click Follow. So once we get to this point where we've created our profile, we'll go on. Anyone need a little help? Well, so far you select two, and I think it wants you to select maybe two more or three or something. So just select, I think, four, and then on the next screen, if, if you don't want them, you can remove that moment that doesn't want us to select a few. Okay. So maybe one more minute or less, and then we'll go on. Uh, at some point, perhaps during the first break coming up soon, you want to make sure you go to your email address and confirm the email that it sends you, because 
Again, it'll give you the full capabilities once you confirm your email address. Unfortunately, I don't think there's a way to skip that screen. I think you do have to select four or five interests, and then later on we can remove them. Okay, so again, we can fine-tune that a little later. I would say let's go on to make sure we're on this screen here. And then um, this is Victor's Bakery. It's our brand new plain profile. Again, what I've said on previous days is that you want to um, customize your profile as much as possible so that it doesn't look like the generic account that everyone gets. Uh, you'll get taken more seriously if you are more if you're all set up. So once we get to this screen, we have a button on the top right, Edit Profile. Let's go check out what we can do there under Edit Profile. And so here we've got business name. <coughs> if you misspelled it or want to change the spelling or whatever, you can. If you've got a picture, you can change your picture. You probably don't have your company picture at the moment, but I'm just going to select one of these built-in pictures in the sample pictures folder. So you don't have to do this, but I'm going to say that this is the, the, the company mascot here. It's koala. And then very important here, for me, it says that my username is currently pinterest.com slash v7203. Really rolls off the tongue, right? Actually, I want Victor's Bakery. And when you click Save, it'll tell you if it's taken or not. That's the name that is the unique name. That's the name that you want uh, to make sure that it's your business name. You want to, uh, on the About You, it's about the company, so again, I think there's a limit, but you want to write something concise that tells people what you're about, especially if you have a more esoteric name, like PMD Interactive, what are they about? Victor's Bakery, well, you can kind of tell by the name, but if you uh, have any space here, I would recommend you write something that makes sense for your business, so I'm going to say perhaps something like San Diego's Premier family-owned bakery in Imperial Beach. Location, I think you can put as detailed as, um, as an address, or simply just put San Diego or California or anything like that. And then there's a process that you need to do for Verify a website, which I won't get into because it's a little technical. Uh, in order for your website to be linked with your Pinterest, click there and it'll tell you, well, put this code into your, into your website in the head tag. If you don't know how to do that, then have someone do it for you, see me during the breaks and such. But you do want to do that at some point so that your website is verified, your, your Pinterest profile gets connected to your website. I'm going to select to save profile. Oops, username's already taken. I wish it would tell me right away as soon as I typed it, but in this case, Victor's Bakery is taken, so maybe I can do Victor's underscore bakery. And you might have to try a couple of times. I'm going to do Victor, Victor Bakery. Okay, that one worked. So I updated my profile a little bit here. Uh, 
there's an icon, name, etc. It talks about creating the boards. Remember, these are to organize your content. We haven't added any content yet, so we won't do that just yet. Notice at the top now it tells me there's my address, pinterest.com slash victorbakery. That's the unique name that you want. That's the name you're going to be putting on uh, business cards and posters and all of that. And then simply that's your name on Pinterest. Sometimes I see on people's businesses that, you know, it says uh, follow us on Facebook. And then what, whatever name they're on on Facebook, Pinterest, whatever name, that's the name that you are on Pinterest. Yeah, underscore. I had to figure out mine. I wasn't able to get exactly what I wanted. So I put I changed the name a little bit. Maybe you could put maybe I could have also done Victor's Bakery SD because I'm in San Diego. You know, something like that. I think there's a limit. I, I'm not sure how, how long it is. Hmm? Fifteen, okay. So fifteen characters. All right, so let's say we're at this point. We'll do one last little thing, then we'll take a break. Well, uh, looks pretty boring. Where's all of those pictures that Pinterest is supposed to be famous for? Well, on the top left, click on the Pinterest logo. That takes you to your home screen or your home feed. This is the content that appears from all of those accounts that you're following. So now here's where all of this content appears. So from the accounts that I have followed, their content shows up. 31 Fearless Ways to Stuff a Jalapeno Chile. So it's got some enticing pictures. There's various actions that we can perform, just like every network. And we'll see what we can do right after our break. So let's take our break, so make sure that everyone's got their account set up. It's about 1.25. We'll do 10 minutes, so we'll be back at 1.35, and then we'll go on.